Hey, this is Alex from Graysand. If you only take one tip from this entire video, install the French door without the handles first. I will get into more details regarding the order and process to install the French doors, but I think it's going to be best to do this video in chronological order, starting at the beginning. In this video, I'll show you how I installed a set of French doors to update the entrance to an old house. I've filmed and outlined the steps needed to install external French doors with locking hardware and a custom made door frame to suit. This video will be helpful to anyone who wants to install French doors as a DIY or carpentry project. I'll show and explain the process and techniques needed to achieve a good result. We begin by removing the existing door unit and checking the floor is level. It's important to make sure the floor is level for the installation of the new door frame. Here are the measurements of the French doors, the spacers and the frame allowances that will determine what size opening I will build the frame to. When building the French door frame, ensure that the doors and spacers are all allowed for. If the door frame is made to the right size, the project will run smoothly. Once I have all the measurements drawn up, I can go through and cut the seal length, the head height and the two stiles to the correct length. I'm using treated pine for the frame and an Australian hardwood for the tread. As a door frame material is already rebated, I cut, chisel and rebate the intersection of the head and style to allow the door styles to fit correctly into the head. Once I've finished the rebate cuts into the door head, I can move on to the next task of rebating the hinge positions into the door frame. I'll be using three hinges for each door. Here's a good tip. Mark and rebate the hinge locations into the door styles before assembling. It is much easier to do on a workbench than trying to do it once the frame is installed. I mark the hinge locations with a sharp pencil, then trace over with a sharp blade to accurately score the hinge locations on the frame. Due to the rebate already in the milled timber, I will need to use a chisel to rebate the hinge locations. If the door jam is not pre-rebated, I can use a small router to quicken up the process. Another good tip is to clamp your stiles securely to your stools or workbench and make sure your knife and chisels are sharp. Rebating hinges is an enjoyable and safe task when using sharp tools, but when you've got blunt tools, it's probably just going to end up in disaster. Once all the hinge locations have been chiseled out neatly to the correct depth, I can move on and chisel out the door head frame rebates for the seals to join into. I knock out the rebated notches to the depth I cut previously and chisel smooth. This will allow the style to connect to the door frame head in my rebated door frame. I rip all the timber frames to the correct width using a circular saw to suit the plasterboard, timber framing and external cladding. On the outside the door frame will finish flush with the external cladding and have an external architrave fixed with nails and sicker flex. My next tip is to mark and rip an extra 2mm with the circular saw and plane the timber to the correct width. This leaves the exposed timber dressed and finished with no saw blade marks. Once the timber is planed to the correct width, I use a block plane and sandpaper to leave a pencil round finish on the edges. Once the frame is prepared, I lay it on a flat surface, then glue, nail and screw it together. I'll first use a PVA wood glue for the joints, then use a brad nail to pin the corners together. I then secure the frame using two 65mm screws in each corner. I first pre-drill the screw positions to ensure the frame doesn't split. It's best to use a drill bit the same size as the screw shank. Once the corners are securely fastened, I can install the French door frame on top of the sill flashing. I've prepared the frame opening to allow for a 7mm gap each side of the door frame. It's enough to pack and fix the frame into position easily. Using three sets of screws into each side of the frame, make sure the frame is plumb and in wind before screwing off. I just noticed these doors are slightly out of square, so the first thing I need to do is plane the doors to be square, meaning the heads of the doors will line up flush. I'll transfer the hinge locations from the door frame onto the side of the French doors. I've already explained the process in other door installing videos I've previously made. Once I score the hinge positions with a sharp knife, the quickest way to rebate the hinge locations onto the door is with a small trimmer. 
All I need to do is set the depth of the trimmer to the thickness of the hinges, then rebate the hinge positions into the door. I do the majority of the rebating with the trimmer, then all is left to do is finish off the corners with the sharp chisel. I then screw the hinges into the side of the French doors into the rebated positions. For these external French doors, I'll be using three hinges per door. I always install the door without the handles first. This door will represent the closing jam for the second French door. To help with the install, I use timber blocks placed at the correct height to hold the door into position while I screw the hinges off. The latch side door I'm installing will be predominantly closed whilst the opposite door with the handle will be used for access to the house on a regular basis. Once the first door is installed, hanging the second door of a set of French doors is much like installing a regular door. The side of the first French door that was installed represents the closing jam for the second French door. I'll check measure the width between the door frame and the edge of the hung door to double check it's the correct width for the second door to fit into. The second door can be plain to fit if needed. As I spent the time making the door frame to the correct size, the second door is going to fit perfectly. Once I have the two French doors installed, swinging freely, with 3mm spaces between the doors and the jams, I can move on to the next task of installing the door hardware. This will include handles and dead bolts. I'm going to start with the flush mounted bolts used for the locking mechanism in the French door that was installed first. I prefer the surface mounted French door bolts as they are easier and quicker to install and possibly a bit stronger. The benefit of the flush mounted bolts which I'm using is that they are hidden from view in the side of the door. One bolt is needed for the top and bottom of the first French door. Once the first door has a dead bolt installed, I can reinstall it, then remove the second door to drill and install the door locks and dead bolts. I prefer to drill out the door lock holes on a couple saw stools and a door block than when the door is already hung. When drilling the 54mm holes for the dead bolt and door lock, it's important to drill the holes from both sides of the door. If you just drill with a hole saw all the way through a door, when it penetrates the opposite side of the door, the hole saw will splinter and damage the face of the door. I now move the door onto its side and lock into a door block. I'll drill out the cylinder lock location with a speed bore and then use a trimmer to rebate most of the latch face into the door's edge. I finish the rebate with a sharp blade and chisel. I can then pre-drill the pilot holes and screw the door latch bolt into the pre-drilled position. Once I have the dead bolt and door handle secured into position, I can reinstall the second French door. I repeat the process of packing the door to height on the deck and screwing the hinges into the correct rebated positions. Now I close the second door and mark the centre of the deadbolt latch and door latch onto the closed French door. I rebate and attach the striker plates onto the left hand side of the French doors. This will allow the right hand side of the French door set to be opened and shut for easy access. It's common for French doors to be rebated at the centre which closes the gap between the two doors. As these French doors are not rebated, I will attach a small piece of timber trim on the inside of the first left hand side door that does not have the handle attached. To finish off, I've reused some of the original architraves and hardy flex cladding. The only thing left to do now is to finish painting the doors, cladding and architraved. Once that's finished, the project is complete. So that's the end of the video. I hope this information was helpful and thanks for watching.